you make me love you now, you make me don't come. If I had listened to my second mind, I wouldn't be here wringing my hands and crying. I wouldn't be here wringing my hands and crying. I wouldn't be here wringing my hands and There ain't no more potatoes The frost don't kill the vine The blues ain't nothing but a good woman on your mind The blues ain't nothing but a good woman on your mind And the blues ain't nothing but a good woman on your mind Your mama, she told me, your papa told me too. You're three times seven, and you know what you want to do. You're three times seven, and you know what you want to do. Well, you're three times seven, and you know what you want to do. Well, you're three times seven, and you know what you want to do. So that was my version of C.C. Ryder, the iconic blues song covered by many, many artists and originally recorded by Ma Rainey, who preferred to be called Madame Rainey. Uh, please do open the video description below if you're interested in the tablature. It's part of my easy lesson pack, because this is an easy song, and it's an excellent practice for your alternating bass. We're in drop D tuning, so tune down your sixth string to D. All the other strings are like in standard tuning. A, D, G, B, and E. Okay, let's start with the introduction. Sliding to the seventh fret, second string, first string, fifth fret, and and I'm sliding down and I keep my third finger because well we're gonna back to that position so that makes things easier and the slide is a bit longer then. Little vibrato, not bending but just slightly. Pull off, 7th fret, and then bend the 6th string, a 6th fret, 2nd string, and let it ring during the rest of that measure. And then we have, well I'm going once over the accompaniment, uh, but without vocals, we're going to a G, which simply is fretting the 6th string on the 5th fret. And you see in the tablature there's a, a measure missing, uh, a little mistake there. So after the seventh measure you play 
measure 27. But after those two uh, measures of A, uh, sorry, G, we're going for two measures back to D, and well, you can play anything, it's not uh, really a melodic part of the song, it's just. So you can play anything using that uh, D chord, the notes of the D chord, and you keep your alternating bass going. And then we're repeating the G section again. And I played it two different ways, that bend, in measure six. So I'm bending, and then I put my second finger on the string to kill the sound and play. Play it straight, not bent. And the second time, I'm just bending it and returning it. And I'm starting the bend in the last beat of the fifth measure. So you can pick it either like in the tablet or before the beat, the first beat of the sixth measure. And to end it, this is a, a nice move that, um, if you know your classics, uh, that's no way to get along by uh, Robert Wilkins. He uses that move, but playing it in a dr uh, open D tuning, not in drop D tuning. It's one of the uh, favorite songs of uh, Rory Block as well. So this is another way. This is a B minor, so it's your A minor moved up and the index uh, <coughs> bars all the strings. But since you're playing only strings 2, 3, 4 and 5, don't worry about those other strings, uh, you're, you're not playing them. So, B minor in the 8th measure, and then move it up, and move it up. Now that you can use all the notes here between strings 2 and 5 because later we're going to play it the other way around uh, but you can do that here, it doesn't sound good and D alright, then we have the verse and <clears throat> If you know Mike Dowling, one of my favorite guitarists, and if you don't know him, please do look him up. He has plenty of videos on uh, YouTube and plenty of teaching materials as well. And I'll, I'll put it in the video description, a link to his version of CC Rider on his first CD, which, on which every song is good. <laughs> it's called Swamp Dog Blues, the CD. And he plays it in open D tuning and with a slide, but if you compare my version and his version, you will notice that I'm using his uh, its atmosphere, the way he approaches the song, rather um, understated. So, the verse. I'll sing it uh, softly. So I'm start with measure eleven. You see. Well, you made me love you, now you 
Have you noticed that I really accent? Especially in those uh, two measures when we go to the A and then back to the D. And I'm using the rest stroke. So I'm not doing that. But I'm and although it's on the beat, it gives the impression that the open A string rings longer than just one beat. And I also accent the first note of the D there. See what you have done. You made me love you. We're going back. We've seen that in the introduction, that G chord. So between the to D. And here I'm muting with my picking fingers. You get a little swing in that. Pull off. Open. And form the chord back again. Once more. It's a 16 bar song. So we have, you see, see, right, to see what you have done. And then we have three times the sentence, you made me love you, now your man don't come. So to add some variations, the second time when we do, you made me love you, we're gonna do it with a bend, as we've seen in the introduction, by the way. Make me love you now. And you can do that either on the beat, now you may don't come, or that bend started just before the beat. I prefer before the beat. But maybe start with on the beat and then later when you're more accustomed with the song, then do it the different way. Again that go to that E7 where we just bar two strings, the second and the fourth string on the second fret. And then <clears throat> instead of going to a, a, a G or like here, I'm doing that movement. And you notice it's in bar 25, the open strings are played softly, they're not melody notes, so don't play. Accent the bass, but don't do that with the open strings. And again here, those last two measures in D, you can play whatever you want using the notes of the D chord. So that's it for the vocal verse. And all the other verses are the same, except I'm doing two variations in the fill. In the second time, if I had listened to my second mind, I wouldn't be here wringing my hands and crying. I wouldn't be, and so on. So I'm when I'm going back, I wouldn't be here wringing my hands and crying. I'm going to end on. The first note of uh, <clears throat> that D chord, and if we compare that to the first verse, then that would be the last note of measure 17. And then I'm playing. Now 
measure 22, the tablet says this, but you can add the D note as well. Makes the singing slightly easier because you can sing in your knees in there. So that's the first variation, and then in A. Again, that last note of measure 17. Second fret on the third string, fourth fret, third fret, second string, and slide to the seventh fret. Fifth fret, seventh fret. That's it for the variations in uh, mm, the verses with vocals. And in the last verse, your mama she told me I'm doing I'm doing the same thing as in uh, the first verse bar 18. All right, the first solo bar 28. I play the solo first slowly. starting with a hammer and I'm just moving the full chord and hammer on with the first and third string. Pull off first string. Again, but now the hammer on is just one beat, a quick hammer on and then the open first and third string. Going to D7 from D, move down your third finger, and then change the whole chord to a D7. I think that is the most easier thing. You could do like, like this, but mm, I think it's easier if you do things that you've done before. <laughs> and so I'm sure you grab that D7 before, so it's not a difficult chord to form. And then we go to our D, e, sorry, G chord. A little arpeggio. And I'm two finger picker there, and I'm playing the open strings with the index and the middle. But I'm playing the fretted note, the third fret, second string, with my index. Because the next note, the open first string, is then easier picked with your middle finger. And then I'm sliding. Doing the same thing as that, but here. And I'm using my pinky and uh, third finger, but you can use, for example, your second and third finger uh, if you prefer that. Always do what's easy or comfortable for you when it comes to uh, fingerings. Don't be afraid to change the fingering. Again, that art, little arpeggio. Bend and woo, let it ring into the next beat. 
It's a good example here of the bend just before the beat of the next measure. And let it release slowly. Now, our B minor, instead of like in the eighth measure, a pinch, I'm doing. I told you you can reverse the notes there, so I'm playing bass note, and in the second beat, the third string, and in the third beat, the second. I added another solo and I, I transcribed in the tap only the first four, first three bars. The rest is a bit variations of what we've seen before. But I'm going. So uh, I'll start it, I'll play it slow. Sliding to the 10th frets, I'm using my pinky, but you can use another finger. Let it ring into the next uh, three beats, and then 7th fret. And now you see why I use my pinky. The 7th fret is just under my index, makes things easier. Note the muting. The, I'm keeping the note short. Muting with the picking finger. Bend and we keep on the bass for two measures and then to our G chord. And then I'm doing the variation which we did in the second verse with vocals. And I'm adding the 7th fret to 5th fret. Before, in the vocals uh, verse, it was. And now we're going to do. Sorry. Like that. And then the second time is just with a bend. Like that. And now we're going to the A, seven. And instead of I'm going to a partial G chord. So and accenting the bass of course. Just the fifth fret, the fifth fret, string on the second fret, and the second string on the third fret. That's all you're fretting. And I use that in the last verse. The three times seven, now you know what you want. So that's it for CC Rider. Great song. Listen to Mike Dowling, please. Nice version. And, um, and Ma Rainey's version and any other that you encounter. It's a great song. 
Have fun. <laughs>